of Jesus at the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice in the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A his greed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison who's, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. as we gather today to remember the baptism of our Lord, we gather at the River of Life, here at the font. This amazing baptistry, the heart of the church, and the place where we all enter into the life of Christ. And I have to tell you that the baptism of Jesus was the scandal of the early church. John doesn't even mention it. Only Matthew has this conversation with John the Baptist between those two cousins saying, you know, this is for people who need to repent. Oops. You don't need repentance, Jesus. I'm not even worthy to pick up your sandal. But Jesus says, no. Let's do this. Barbara Brown Taylor has a... a well, she has a sermon about everything, doesn't she? <laughs> Golly day. Um, last week, Carol and I were here, and I read her an epiphany sermon by Barbara Brown Taylor, and we both wept. I mean, get the book, Home by Another Way, and read it out loud to your friends. It's really powerful. But in her, in her sermon about Epiphany, she tells the story of a girl who grew up in a home for unwed mothers, that her, Cecilia's mother took care of the house and made the meals and everything, and so <laughs> Cecilia was really petted and cared for by all the unwed mothers who had come to have their shameful babies away from their own homes. And one girl showed up, and Cecilia said to her, whatever you do when you talk to Mother Superior about your baby, don't say the father died. Everybody says that. <laughs> and the girl who was just arriving said, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> So the new arrival turns to Cecilia and says, what did you say when you got here? And Cecilia thought, she thinks I'm one of those sinners. She thinks I'm one of those fallen girls, those disgraced girls. She didn't mind being there and taking care of people and making sure it was okay, but she did not want to be mistaken for one of those sinners. Jesus didn't go to the front of the line. Jesus didn't bully his way in, he just stood in line with everyone else, shuffled his way up to the Jordan to his cousin, and said, 
here I am for baptism. We don't really like to be grouped with those people who are sinners. We don't like to be grouped with those people who, you know, have mistaken ideas about guns or, you know, or, you know, when somebody says, well, as we believe and you don't believe that, how hard it is to figure out what to do to get out of that. That's the scandal that Jesus had right from the very beginning. In Matthew, we know his ancestry. That's in Matthew 1. In Matthew 2, Joseph and Mary and the baby get sent off to Egypt and come back. And, you know, all the times that they talk about dreams in the New Testament are right there in Matthew. And it's Joseph and it's the wise men and it's all of them heard the voice of God in dreams. So the baptism of Jesus was a scandal. How could the perfect child of God need baptism? So, Jesus begins his ministry in the Gospel of Matthew as soon as he's baptized. We know nothing else from Matthew about his birth, his childhood. You know, he was 12 years old and went up to the temple. Not in Matthew. So, Matthew begins everything right here at baptism. The story from the book of Acts, where Peter is sent to the Gentiles, for goodness sakes, he has to go and tell Cornelius, who is not a Jew, who's a Roman. He's part of the Goyim, the nations, the not like us people. He has to go and say, this is what Jesus did. And if you want the cliff notes of how, you want the elevator speech for what to say, if someone says, what do you believe? It's right here. <laughs> Jesus was baptized. He did good things. They put him to death, and he rose from the dead. That's it. That's the whole <laughs> preaching that Peter thinks is important for the Gentiles to know to follow Jesus. That is it, those four things. And immediately... Cornelius and his family were baptized, and Peter was in hot water because we were not allowing people into the, the followers of Jesus unless they became Jews first and were circumcised and then could become. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles. And there we were. A conundrum for the church. And lots of the book of Acts is about how they fought out who could be in the church. And it's this passage in the book of Acts that we use as the Episcopal Church. Remember when we, when we ordained Jean Robinson and the rest of the Anglican communion was really angry with us? Our response is, we set our hope on Christ, and this is the passage. Cornelius coming into the church. Nothing God has made is to be called unclean. That's why we, this is where we stood when we said, no, God has made each person in God's own image and every person is qualified in their baptism to be part of the church. The first thing, I think, the first thing I did here was at a vestry meeting I don't, I'm not even sure you gave me any time. I don't think there was an allotment of time. You just said pray, and I just prayed, and then just took a little extra time <laughs> at the end. Okay. Um, you see, I carry in my pocket, I know I've talked with you about this, oil. I carry oil for healing, and I carry a vial of oil that the bishop consecrated for us to use when there's a baptism. When a person is baptized, you take the chrism, the oil from the bishop, and you, you mark their forehead and say, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. forever. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in my baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. And I told the vestry that I thought that everything we did grew out of our baptism, and I would like to anoint each of them to remind them of their baptism. And that was the first thing I did in this place. 
Often when I'm talking with people who know I'm a priest and have come to talk with me, I feel like the question they're asking is not, do I need healing or I need to make confession, it's how do I live my life as a Christian? And I think the answer to that is you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. That's it. Everything you need came from your baptism. Now, should there be someone here who's not baptized, you should just probably, we probably won't do it this morning, but I mean, I would consider it if you want to be baptized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the whole thing, you know. Um, but talk to Lisa when she's here. Talk about getting baptized if you've not been baptized. Um, your life is in the church, in Christ, is only and wholly and completely about living into your baptism. It is not my ordination that calls me to ministry in the church. It is my baptism. I am ordained to do certain acts because it's important that we have order in the church and people know what roles we play. But my work in ministry is from my baptism, not from my ordination. So today we're going to renew our baptismal covenant and I ask you, listen deeply to the questions that I'm going to ask you. And I'm gonna ask you, if you say yes, I will with God's help that you mean it. If you can't say it yet, then let's have a conversation about that. But I'm asking you not to do this just as a liturgy, but do it as a question for you as a Christian. And I don't want to see any of these bulletins left here to be recycled. Take it home with you. Read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest what you have just committed to. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it on your bathroom mirror. Wherever you spend most time, I myself am more likely at the refrigerator than the mirror. But now I'm just saying, wherever you are, put it up there and go over it. Live into your baptism. During my 10 weeks here, <laughs> I just um, realized I'm looking at the photos I've been taking and posting on Facebook. I've, I've taken 1,791 pictures <laughs> <of this neighborhood. laughs> since, since, uh, since November 4th. So, um, and if you wanna be a really kick-ass photographer, Take 2,000 photos and show people 10 of them. <laughs> because surely a monkey could take you know, 10 good photos out of 2,000. Just be really careful that you don't show people all the bad photos. All right, I'm going to tell you some of the things I've learned in the last 10 weeks. One, try something new. I have never been a rector uh, or an interim rector or in charge of a congregation. Never, ever. This was, I haven't even worked in a church since 1992. But now that I'm retired, the bishop feels like she can send me places. <laughs> so she asked me if I would come here. And I was not prepared for how much fun this would be and how much love I would feel and how much I loved you all. I was not prepared to fall in love. 10 weeks seems like a very short amount of time for your heart to be really touched, but my heart has been touched and I'm grateful. Try something like walking around looking at what's in your neighborhood. <coughs> Pay attention, take pictures, look at those pictures and think, what could I learn from this morning. <clears throat> I've walked this neighborhood almost every morning and just prayed for the people who worked in the buildings, who lived in the buildings, who ate in the restaurants, who walk by our church, who have sex here, who have babies here, who die here, who were born here, that they will know they are loved by God. Know your neighborhood. Know your community, know your neighbors. Get a toolkit. I went over to, you know, to Ace Hardware and, um, and I spent money to get a toolkit that the church paid for. So it's yours, it's staying in Lisa's office. There is almost 
well, not everything, but there are a whole lot of things you can fix with a basic toolkit. <laughs> Get one. <laughs> Do it. <coughs> Be nice. I believe it's more important to be nice than it is to be right. I have a quick tongue, I have a quick anger. I try not to do those things, but I'm really trying. I will never be Mr. Rogers, <laughs> but I don't have to be Cruella de Vil. <laughs> Let people love you. Thank you for the ways you have cared for me. Love Lisa when she comes next week. The only way to be church is in love. <coughs> Read out loud. <coughs> Find things that are important to you and call a friend and say, we're getting together, I want to read this to you. There's something about words spoken between people that's different than what we read to ourselves. Talk about them. Go on retreat when you start something new. Wednesday, I'll start an eight-day retreat and ask God what my next work will be. Because I don't know what's next. I don't really have to. I'm retired and I'm doing okay. But I, I mean, who knows what's next? Just before coming here, I know I've talked about this a number of times, but just before coming here, um, I went to a retreat with Martin Smith, and I heard a word. Dans le cœur de l'Église, je serai l'amour. It's Saint Therese of Lisieux. In the heart of the church, I will be love. I meditated on that. I preached on that. I found it profound. I pondered getting a tattoo, but I couldn't imagine it. Should it be a circle? <laughs> I've never really had a tattoo, so I thought if I'm going to have one, I'd better get it right. <coughs> or maybe you just start with one and you just keep getting better as you get more. Okay, well, whatever. But I have to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I got that wrong. <clears throat> I should have known. I should have paid attention. I should have heard in my heart of hearts, dans le cœur de l'Église, nous serons le monde. In the heart of the church, we will be loved. It's not me. It's not me. This church can only be church if every person has that. And we say, nous serons le monde. We will be loved. It's not the priest, it's not the pastor, it's all of us. So, my beloved friends, I leave you with this. In the heart of the church, we will be loved. You, you plural, and I, you and I, we were all sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. My brothers and sisters, live into that love. Oh, oh, oh.
to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced the works of Satan and promised to serve God faithfully in the Holy Catholic Church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the people of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your Son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water. We pray you by the spirit, power of your Holy Spirit that those who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. If you're afraid your glasses will get wet, you might want to take them off right now. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. But um, next Sunday is the priest in charge's first Sunday here. So please. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Thanks. It was your message. Everyone else already heard it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so please be here. I know it's a three-day weekend, but if you can be around, just we would love for everyone to be here to give her a great welcome. Um, we are still collecting socks. There's some space in there, and I think up the stairs we have socks. Um, I, coffee hour's on the fourth floor today. Coffee hour's on the fourth floor, so we'll go up there after church. Please join us for coffee hour there. Any announcements anyone has? Jesse. A uh, couple quick things that I just didn't get to um, Bob or Nolan in time to get into things. Um, one, annual meeting this year, by bylaws, it should be the last Sunday of January. That is the weekend the presiding bishop is here. So we will be treating it as if it's an inclement weather day. <laughs> annual, he's, because we're he's all going to go to the revival, let's be clear. Yeah. Um, he's and, a force of nature. And he really, truly is. <laughs> and so we will have annual meeting on February 2nd, directly following service. So please be here. We will have vestry elections for one member of the vestry as well as conversations about the 2020 budget so if you are in town that weekend please be there it's really important that we have everyone here to give us um, that information and speaking of the presiding bishop's revival uh, across linda myself and stephen we have gotten enough tickets that we have about 13 or 14 to give to parishioners. So reach out to myself if you need a ticket. Also, Stephen checked this morning and you can still request tickets and individual people can request up to six <coughs> tickets for free. Um, so if you wanna bring your whole family, uh, please go ticket. ahead and get your own tickets. <laughs> um, <laughs> but please reach out because we do want everyone to be able to participate in that. From what I have heard from when he has done these in other parts of the country, they are incredible events, and I'm really looking forward to being there. That same weekend, he will also be doing an event for the young adults in the diocese here in our building, um, which is very exciting, and Jason Crichton is helping to coordinate all of that work, so thank you to Jason. Um, so if you've been wondering how long you'll be um, tripping and um, having oh, problems yeah, on the floor upstairs, that. Mm -hmm. um, the we believe the materials for the floor are almost here on a slow boat from someplace not here. Yeah. We're not sure exactly how they Very slow boat. Very <laughs> slow boat. Um, and um, looking at the timing of everything, we are going to ask them to do the actual installation of the flooring starting this the Monday after the presiding bishop in, is in town so that it's not torn up while the presiding bishop is here. So um, look forward to that. Um, if, if you decide this works, you may worship down here when they're tearing up, or you may be on the fourth floor, but stay tuned. Yes, John. There will be a group photo with Linda. At the very end of this service, she will tell you what to do. So shelter in place. <laughs> <laughs> um, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
with the great Thanksgiving. Would you please stand? Before we say the great Thanksgiving, I invite you, if you have any persons on your heart for healing or for repose of the soul, that you name those now. I named my friend Billy, who died last week. Are there others? The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. <laughs> Before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. <coughs> By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. 
Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of their sons and daughters, that St. St. Thomas and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom of the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
stand, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the God who dances in creation, who embraces us with human love, who shakes our lives like thunder, bless us and drive us out from this place to fill the world with justice. The blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Yeah, put your hand up and look like you're waving. <laughs> All right. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you.